Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are continuing on with a special tools investigation. We are going to be looking at the STEM Direction tool, and in the special tools palette here, it is the seventh tool here, the STEM Direction tool. It looks like a little note head with arrows on both the stems up and down, uh, indicating that this is going to change the STEM direction. I'm just gonna zoom in here a bunch so we can see what we're working with, and just like all the other special tools, you have to select in the measure to to get a, the handles. And you'll see when I do that, I get handles above and below every entry, including the rest, which I'll talk about in a second. And the simple thing to do with this tool is to just check one of the handles and you'll see that the stem will flip in that direction. So you can see I checked the top handle and the stem goes upwards. If I check the bottom handle, you'll see the stem goes downwards. If I have no handles selected, the stem will go in its default direction. And uh, this is important to realize that uh, Finale has basically three direction states for stems. The default direction, which will follow the rules of the stem reversal that can be set in the, uh, the staff attributes, which I've talked about in 3-3, uh, I believe. You can actually set where on the staff the stems flip up and down, but that's a, a totally different lesson. Um, but anyways, that's the default direction. Uh, by checking one of these handles, you're freezing the stem in the upwards or downwards direction, right? So three states, frozen down, frozen up, or unchecked is default direction. Now this has some important indications. Now you may have noticed if I check the bottom handle here, I'm freezing the stem downwards. The first thing you notice is that the articulation flips to the lower side here. Just like when you have layers, the articulation flips to the lower side when the stem is uh, frozen downwards so that the articulations are not overlapping each other in the middle here, right? The same thing happens even if you have a single note on a uh, measure here. If you freeze the, uh, the stem downwards, the articulation will flip. The other interesting effect here is that, you know, even though the stem is going the correct way according to your rules, it's still frozen downwards, which means that if you actually move these notes, so if I move them downwards, you're going to notice that they that first note doesn't flip upwards, right? This is because I've frozen that stem downwards, so no matter what I do, that stem is always going to go down. No matter how low I make these notes, it's always going to be frozen down. The same thing would happen if I uh, froze it upwards. So just be conscious of the difference between freezing the stem in a particular direction or allowing the stem to sort of float in its default direction, in which case, you know, it'll flip as necessary depending on where it is on the staff, all right? Incidentally, I should have mentioned that you can flip uh, stems with beams as well. So if I go into this measure, and in this case, it doesn't matter. You only need to uh, check one of them to get the entire uh, beamed group to flip. Now you notice I, I checked the first one here on the lower side to get that uh, this beam group to flip. I can do the same with the second one, it will flip. The difference, of course, is that the articulation exists on the second one, so that articulation is also going to go downward. So just a, a couple little subtleties here to be aware of uh, if you're gonna flip uh, stems uh, in this manner. Now, with this particular tool, the delete and clear key doesn't have any function. So if I have that selected and press clear or delete, it doesn't uncheck it. So uh, this tool is a little unique in that way. There's no contextual menu other than remove manual adjustments, which I guess just unchecks it. So why would you even do that? It just basically does the same thing. So yeah, delete or clear doesn't have any function. Now, I should also mention that um, all of this can be achieved in both speedy and simple entry. In fact, if I go to speedy entry here, um, you may know if you're familiar enough with speedy entry that the L key will do the same thing. I can flip that stem upwards, flip it downwards. The trick with speedy and simple entry is that when you do this, you are setting these stems frozen no matter how many times you do this. So I've frozen it upwards, I've frozen it downwards. You can kind of see that the articulation is below now. So this is not the default state of that stem. You just have to be careful. Now, in order to get it back to the default state on Finale, you press Option L, which I'm not going to do because um, I have that programmed for a keyboard maestro script. But uh, you can also do this in the speedy entry, uh, speedy edit commands. I'm going to go to set stem direction to automatic, and you'll see that that's Option L. Uh, normally, that would work, except I have that, uh, that combination tied up with something else. Um, but anyway, so that'll get you back to your uh, default direction. You can do the same with simple entry if you just kind of go in here and select that note. Uh, you can press the L key to flip it up or down. And again, it's frozen up, 
it's frozen down, frozen up, frozen down. It'll just vacillate between the two frozen states until you press not Option L on a Mac for simple, but Shift L is the keystroke for simple entry. Just a slight difference there. And with Shift L, you're you're uh, making it back to the default direction. Incidentally, if I flip that stem up, this is actually reflected in the special tools. You can see now that the uh, the top handle is selected, so they are completely mirroring each other, and you can just undo it by unchecking that. All right. Now the other thing I should mention is that you can do this in bulk, so you don't have to do each individual stem. You can just select all four of these measures. In the utilities menu, there is a stem direction option here, and you have up, down, and default direction. So just choosing up freezes all of the stems in the upwards direction. Down freezes them all in the downwards direction. Notice the articulation. Or, of course, use default direction. will change it back to its original default state. Now, what's interesting is that even rests have a upwards or downwards stem direction. It's just that if you were to do something on this rest here, or let's do it on the eighth rest, it doesn't, um, it doesn't do anything because a rest can't be flipped. There's no stem on a rest. However, the rest being an entry in Finale can have a uh, state for the stem, even though the stem doesn't exist. What happens is that now that this uh, rest has an upward stem direction, if I were to go here and add a note over that rest, or just change that rest to a note, you'll notice that uh, it's going to take on that upward stem direction. So now if I go back here, you'll see that that is still checked, and we're getting the result that you would get if that was uh, checked and a note was there, right? So you do have to be careful about this when you're dealing with rests, and interestingly, the um, utility's stem direction will also change the uh, the rests in this uh, passage as well. So if we go back here, we can see that now all of the rests have that upper box checked. So just something to be aware of that rests can actually have stem directions, believe it or not. And incidentally, you can actually do the same thing in simple or speedy entry. You can actually press L and you'll get that rest to have a, a lower stem direction. So it's a little strange, but um, you know that, that's what's going on. Now, as far as layers are concerned, so if we go into this alto sax uh, part here, you'll see I have two layers. When you go into this measure, you'll see that all of the upper uh, handles are checked for layer one, and you can't actually uncheck those. So there's no way to get back to the quote-unquote default stem direction for uh, notes in layers one and two specifically. Um, layers three and four is different, and this has to do with the document options for layers. So in uh, the settings for layer one, you have this freeze stems option, uh, freeze stems up, and layer two is freeze stems down. Layers three and four, um, by default in Finale, don't have these freeze stems. So if I were to do this with layer three and four, you, you would have the option to send them back to their default direction. But because those settings are freezing the stems automatically, uh, you can't actually use the default direction. What you can do is flip it so that you're freezing downwards on layer one if you want. There might be uh, instances where you have to do this, um, but you can't, uh, you can't change to the default direction. In this case, it's either up or down frozen. Uh, those are the options. And of course, to get to the layer two notes, you have to actually switch to layer two, and you'll see that the layer two uh, handles on the bottom are all checked. So again, you can flip it, but you can't actually um, return it to its default state. Now, stem direction can be linked and unlinked. So let's, let's go into the tenor sax part, and we can use this tool in the tenor sax part. Let's say we're gonna choose um, this measure here. Oops, you gotta be in layer one, there we go. That's why they're not appearing. Um, we can freeze the stems downwards in the second measure, and you'll notice that uh, the, uh, the stem turns orange. This is indicating that this stem direction is now unlinked from the score. So if I go back to the score, we can see that that uh, stem is orange. Now it happens to be in the correct direction, but it's still, you know, in the score, there's no handle selected. So this is still in its default direction state, but we can choose the upper handle. And so now we can have different stem directions uh, between the, uh, the score and the part. And we can always do the whole thing where we're relinking in all parts, you know, and that'll turn it black and everything. And then just doing this will uh, return it back to normal. Interestingly, the command key will also work in this regard. So uh, as you know, with many things unlinkable, when you press the command key while you're in a linked part, you can uh, do something without unlinking it. So I can actually change the stem direction down without unlinking it, and, and that will work like that. And vice versa, 
in the score, um, choosing the, or holding down the command key and pressing one of these buttons will actually unlink it and change it as well. So that's also an option. You can see that it's still uh, unlinked, but we can always do the relink here. Now, with simple and speedy entry in a part, this will always unlink. Uh, you can see that the stem direction turns orange here. It will always unlink, and you can't actually um, uh, use the command key. You can't press command L in the speedy entry to sort of um, uh, keep it linked. So the simple and speedy entry doesn't have that, that uh, added bonus of using the command key to reverse that behavior. The utilities uh, stem direction uh, option here uh, will always keep everything linked, whether or not you do that in the the part or not. Somehow or another, I got these unlinked. But you know what we can do? We can do relink. We could do relink. So as I was saying, if I go into the tenor sax part and do the uh, stem direction uh, down, you'll see that it will. The stems remain black, which means that these are still linked. So that utility stem direction is actually um, always going to keep uh, the the score and the linked part uh, linked together like that. And then the last uh, thing about linked parts is that when you have voiced linked parts, so like this uh, alto sax line here, and I've got two different uh, parts using the voiced part system for alto sax one and two, you can you know you can flip the stems here, like if I were to do this, but it actually won't have any effect on the alto sax one part. You'll see that that note is exactly where it was, and in fact, in the part itself, these handles will do absolutely nothing. So this uh, this stem direction tool. Uh, is completely um, non-functional in a voiced linked parts. Um, even though you can do it within the score itself, it actually doesn't affect the part at all. So that's just one little limitation of this tool uh, when you're dealing with voiced linked parts. All right, so I think that covers everything in the stem direction tool. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful. Um, yeah, so there you go. So the next lesson we're going to do is on the... Um, the double split stem tool, which is the next one right here. Uh, it's a little bit related to this tool, but not really. But um, yeah, so come back for that and we'll look at the double split stem tool next. All right. Once again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you soon on the next video.